And what do you think other companies could learn from you and a company like you? I actually think that we, uh, the last like three, four years, we have learned a lot about entrepreneurship mm. uh, in our company. Mm. Something that is not easy, but we, uh, I think we, we really have gained some knowledge about mm. it. Um, Pano Ricard as a company has entrepreneurship as one of its really core DNAs. Mm. Mm. So um, uh, you would think, and I do think, that it's actually easier mm. in this company to be, become an entrep entrepreneur mm. than in others. But still there are a lot of challenges. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that we have overcome them all, but we have... You're probably a bit further than yes, others. Yes, we have learned mm. quite a lot, mm. I think, mm. uh, during the years. Very interesting. You're working with uh, innovation and you're working with a number of ventures. Uh, how are you governing them and how do you think about governing them compared to governing a company? So um, I think we are still uh, looking for the right model. Uh, we haven't really found it yet, mm -hmm. but we are trying different things. What we have seen is that uh, it is super important mm. that we have them li like we have them right now in a separate department mm. uh, and actually we have taken them out so they are not part of any normal corporate processes um, and I think it's crucial that they right. are uh, can so you describe for us why you think it's crucial what would happen if they weren't uh, they would die tomorrow mm for sure mm. uh, because what we are trying to create and we are still in a learning process that is really to find we are, we are really trying to to um, work with them mm. as startups right. within uh, the corporate world which right. is not easy right. but we are really trying yeah. so we are trying to create an environment mm. where they can uh, work as freely as possible mm. from the normal corporate mm. world. Right. And I would actually say it's also protecting the uh, the normal processes within the company as well, mm. because let's, uh, an easy example is finance, for example. Yes. For a startup, there there is totally different KPIs that we should mm. look at mm. than from the normal, uh, the normal, <laughs> um, world or what what we are doing normally um, so it's also very stressful to put mm. that onto the people that works in the normal finance structure because they don't they don't really have time to right. do it and mm. uh, um, so uh, what we have done is actually we have dedicated people that works only with the startups mm. Uh, from a finance perspective, for example, mm. uh, helping us to to set up the right KPIs mm. to mm. measure. Uh, and again, I'm saying it's not easy. Right. We will still be asked exactly the same KPIs that yeah. the normal uh, business mm. is. Um, to. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, so it's still a learning process, mm. uh, but I think we are getting there, mm. uh, and we get a lot of more understanding. Mm. Uh, that we need to look at these startups in a different uh, way. Mm. Just take a very example like volume. That right. is something that we, of course, volume is something we mm. always report. Mm. Um, for a startup like Fine Cocktails, mm. volume is totally irrelevant yeah. uh, because uh, we want to, we need to make a geographic focus where we, mm. so for this example, it's London. Mm where we uh, start mm. uh, and then it's a super premium product mm. we need to uh, we need to um, select very carefully where we mm. want to sell this product uh, if we would have volume mm. as uh, a kpi we would do everything wrong yes. what we need to do is to find the right business model yeah. in the small world and when we have that we can scale up yes so instead of volume is for us velocity, which mm. is how much do we sell in each store? That can be mm. very interesting mm. to look at. Uh, so that is a very easy example mm. of uh, 
of how uh, how we need to look different right. at the startups. Right. And also, of course, it's very different people working mm. in these new ventures than yeah. what is working in the rest of the company. Mm. And they need to be treated uh, and governed in a different way. Yeah. They are entrepreneurs and they mm. need to be able to work as entrepreneurs. Yes. Very interesting. And um, so we actually met when, when I was teaching board work for startups. Yes. And taking that and thinking about um, the large corporations, what do you think their boards actually need to think differently about thinking that they now have both the core innovation and innovation in a separate unit. What are they not thinking about? What are they not monitoring, do you think? Um, I think I will answer the question a little bit differently. What I think is, is the most, and this is not just for our industry, but I, yes. I think what is the most challenging thing is that innovation is about long term. Yes. And uh, most of everything else we are reporting is, is more short term, even, mm. even if, of course, mm. it's, uh, mm. I mean, the long term planning mm. in this company is three years. Yes. So, uh, and for innovation, mm. three years is nothing. Yeah. So um, I think that is, uh, that is, I think, challenging mm. for, uh, for them to know what, what they should monitor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually. Uh, but we have come quite far ahead, so at least now we are monitoring the innovation funnel, and only that mm. for mm. for total for Panama Ricard as a whole. Mm. That's um, so they actually now are uh, getting reports on the funnel, Fantastic. at least how many products we have in the yeah. funnel yeah. versus what we have uh, in the pipeline that is actually right. coming out now. But they can see the whole uh, pipeline. Right. Um, so uh, I think we are getting there. Mm. But it's interesting because uh, in a lot of governance, you actually you do work with strategy and you do work with long term, but you still very seldom look at innovation totally separate. Mm. Uh, and you can see now that that's happening a lot with a lot of companies. So there's a lot of companies that starts to put up innovation units like the ones you have. So if you were sitting on a board of a large company of a different industry how would you think that you would recommend that you would monitor uh, that also from the board level well one thing which i think is good we, mm. is what i just uh, mentioned yeah. which is actually the funnel to make sure mm. that there is an innovation funnel yeah. <laughs> i uh, also think it's very important to monitor is is uh, the health of that funnel <laughs> And what I mean by that yeah, is what do you also mean by that? yes, <laughs> because you can have a lot of th of products in the funnel. Yeah. But uh, what we are working very hard on is to make sure that we have a funnel, mm -hmm. uh, but also that we make sure that we work uh, in the way that we, as soon as possible, understand mm. whether that innovation is going to work or not. Mm. So a healthy funnel, mm. I mean, is a funnel where you actually, you, you, um, you, know. you have a lot of ideas, but mm. you also have the courage to kill ideas mm. that are not good and that you have a good way mm. of testing ideas. Mm. And again, it's not easy mm. to do that, mm. uh, but um, uh, I think that would be something uh, uh, that would be interesting. Mm. So more uh, maybe like a, a new venture company mm. looking mm. at innovations mm. in, in the sense that you you really make sure that you have a lot of ideas, but yeah. you also test them yeah. and kill the ones that will not work in the yeah. future and then prioritize and, and uh, put the effort into mm. those who actually, who you can make a bet mm. on. Mm. You will never be certain that they work, but... Um, right. Finalize this with um, uh, a question, and that is: If you were a furniture, what would you be? Mm. <laughs> that was a difficult question. And we can take a furniture. And, uh, yes, I. Old perspective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. 
actually. I, the first thing I was thinking of was the mm. sofa, and then I thought, why a sofa? Mm. Uh, I, I can't really uh, see what that could be. Uh, I can be quite lazy at times, uh, mm -hmm. not um, just being... Uh, maybe a sofa is something calm, relaxing, so mm. may maybe that could be part of it. Mm. So, But uh, otherwise, I could be uh, a drawer, maybe. Right. With a lot of different... Um, Drawers. Mm. Do you say a drawer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With a lot of drawers. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe that could be something yeah. because I am curious. So uh, mm. there is a lot of experiences and a lot of uh, thoughts hidden in those drawers. Maybe. That's I don't very know. good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it was really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you.